Full disclosure, I wish I was a bit more active, but still I'm going to talk about uh, what we achieved in Libre Course uh, CI uh, this year. Uh, just uh, to get more information, who does know what is Libre Course CI about? Okay, I'll uh, provide some brief introduction. Uh, my name is Oleg Nunashev. I am uh, working with 4C on LibreCourse project. I am one of uh, Jenkins uh, core maintainers, uh, and Jenkins is uh, one of my biggest projects right now. And uh, yeah, to pay my bills, I work for CloudBees. So CloudBees is an enterprise vendor for various tools based on uh, Jenkins. But historically, I started in hardware companies. I have PhD degree in hardware engineering, and yeah, uh, I was working in uh, multiple uh, open source hardware projects, including OpenRisk before. Okay, um, uh, we already talked what is uh, LibreCourse uh, about. So LibreCourse is a hub where you can uh, access uh, hardware projects, where you can find these hardware projects and uh, find information about them. Uh, one may ask, why would you, one need such hub when uh, there is already GitHub or something like that? Because on GitHub, you can probably find many projects. So the idea of uh, LibreCourse is to aggregate uh, specifically uh, open source digital hardware projects and to provide additional value. And what is uh, this additional value? There are components uh, like LibreCourse Web, which provides uh, just information, aggregation of uh, uh, metadata. For example, if you use FuseSoc, you can get uh, metadata from FuseSoc on the uh, web. There is also Planet, which in integrates blog posts, and this is CI. Uh, when we started LibreCourse, uh, it was in 2016, well, uh, to be exact, when I joined the project, there was an open question about continuous integration for open source hardware projects. Because, yeah, indeed, you can easily uh, host your project on GitHub, but it's a bit more difficult uh, for hardware projects, especially if you need FPGAs or other companies which you cannot really put to Travis CI or to cloud instances. So that's how uh, LibreCourse CI started. Uh, the idea was pretty simple. Uh, let's have a kind of uh, uh, SaaS service which would allow uh, open source hardware engineers uh, to um, uh, get uh, their continuous integration running uh, on a service. Uh, the idea was um, quite simple. Uh, uh, we wanted to integrate with LibreCourse Web. We wanted to offer simulation agents um, uh, within uh, our infrastructure. So if you just run simulation flows, uh, then it, uh, you would be able to just run uh, like in Travis. And if you had FPGA agents or hardware components, you would be able to connect your agents or to use uh, standard ones which we wanted to provide. So this was an original idea of uh, LibreCourse CI. Uh, just have uh, CI as a service uh, for hardware projects. Um, it was a 2016 vision. Um, of course, we wanted to have integrations, but we still wanted to have the most of the things in GitHub. But then uh, we started implementing that. So in 2017, we had uh, uh, open risk, uh, sorry, OrConf uh, in Hebden Bridge uh, in UK. And there I presented uh, the state of LibreCourse CI, where we basically had this alpha setup of infrastructure. Uh, it was based on Jenkins. It was using uh, Docker as a backend for virtualized simulation agents. It was able to connect physical nodes. We had some demos. Um, and we also offered a pipeline library. Uh, so if you're familiar with Jenkins, there is a Jenkins pipeline technology, which allows to describe build flows in Groovy. And the uh, pipeline library offered a way to just uh, reuse common steps. So for example, if you wanted to run FuseSoc, there was a step uh, for FuseSoc, which was uh, preparing uh, all uh, libraries, which was preparing environment, uh, and then uh, launching that. So that's what we uh, offered in 2016. Uh, but uh, there was uh, one problem uh, which we hit uh, two years ago, is that we were mostly focusing on CI as a service. It required a lot of resources, apparently it required a lot of time uh, for maintenance, and uh, yes, yeah, you know, in open source uh, projects, time is uh, the most critical resource. It's much more important than money, and unfortunately we didn't have enough time uh, uh, to maintain SaaS as we would like to, uh, but on the other hand, uh, there were other outcomes from, uh, which came from the projects. Firstly, we were able to provide reusable uh, configurations and Docker images, so anybody was able uh, to take um, our LibreCourse CI and launch it locally with all libraries, with all reusable configurations. Uh, so yeah, if uh, you're using FuseSoc, if you're using uh, Yosis, uh, Virlator, and other standard open source EDA tools, uh, this is a project which may help you a lot. 
Another good outcome, which probably the most significant one, was uh, for developer tools. Because in order to build uh, this CI as a service, uh, we needed to somehow offer EDA tools within our infrastructure. So we started working on common uh, Docker images for EDA tools. And uh, we offered uh, these images, uh, again, for many open source tools. We also offered images for Quartos uh, and other things which were required for uh, demos we had in uh, FUSOC. So it was uh, the biggest achievement and the most of adoption actually came from developer tools, not from SaaS. And later, uh, the vision has changed. So the vision changed to putting the developer tools first. So instead of having SaaS, uh, we wanted to have uh, LibreCourse as a uh, kind of uh, solution for open source developers where you can uh, take common components. Again, uh, if you take uh, developer tool images, you can uh, take them, you can run it not only on Jenkins, not only on LibreCourse CI, but also on Travis, uh, on GitLab Actions, and whatever you use for your open source projects. That was the uh, idea to provide uh, reusable tools, and that's what we focused on um, after 2017. And now we offer a set of uh, base Docker images. You can just find them on Docker Hub. So for example, uh, there are images like uh, LibreCourse CI. It's our base image for FuSoC, which includes uh, all standard EDE tools. So again, it's Yosis, uh, later uh, it includes CocoTB, and it includes proper Python versions, it includes uh, FuSoC, and you can just run FuSoC within this image out of the box. And we also had similar image, for example, for RISC-V. Uh, with uh, included compiler and specific tools, so we were also able to run few SOC with a RISC V. Um, it was one of the things uh, which we kept working on. And another thing was about a model based environment. So, if you were in Hebden Bridge, Stefan has presented a model SECA system there. So, basically, it was also a way to access tools, but not as Docker images, but uh, in more classic ways using models. So the idea was that if you have multiple versions of different tools, uh, if you just want to have all combinations uh, available for developers, it would uh, cause explosion of uh, image sizes, explosion of number of images, and it would just be become unmaintainable. So we implemented more classic approach when any developer can pull a tool from the repository and just start using that. So there are also images for that um, and yeah, basically uh, there are uh, automatic packaging flows for standard tools which you can use and as a consumer of this infrastructure you can just pull in uh, this uh, tool specification and start using it in your projects. Okay, uh, that's what we had in 2017. So the biggest question of what has happened in 2018, and unfortunately I don't have a good answer for you, uh, because our main focus in 2018, due to the lack of time, etc., was just keeping uh, things alive, uh, periodic updates of dependencies of configurations. So really nothing changed in uh, 2018 uh, except uh, some implementations. Uh, but 2019 was different. Uh, there are some histor historical reasons. Um, we had uh, uh, several students reaching out uh, through GSOC program to ask whether they could contribute something, whether they could start something. And we started working towards uh, that direction uh, and we started refreshing our ecosystem. Uh, so there were, were a lot of updates, uh, mostly related to LibreCourse CI Jenkins master image. Uh, so now this image um, um, is updated uh, with new versions. You can, we got CI CD running, etc. So this image uh, became, uh, just got a much better state. Uh, but yeah, it may be interesting to you only if you use Jenkins or if you consider using LibreCourse CI. More interesting part uh, actually came not from uh, these updates, but from a Google Summer of Code itself. So this summer we had one student, Nancy Chohan. Uh, we were working with her together with uh, uh, Stafford Horn. Uh, he's uh, in this uh, odd room. Uh, yeah, and the idea was uh, to use LibreCourse CI in order to uh, uh, provide better CI/CD pipelines uh, for uh, open risk projects, specifically for Morik and Maracina. Um, and yeah, this was uh, the main focus. But it also led to multiple uh, updates within LibreCourse uh, CI infrastructure, and I just want to show some examples of these updates. Uh, 
Uh, one of the things, uh, we got a specific flavor of LibreCore CI images for open risk. So if you develop a project on the top of the of open risk, now we have a base image, uh, which includes um, GCC, which includes uh, standard open risk testing tools. So if you're an open risk maintainer, you can just take this image and start running it. Uh, so yeah, I was mentioning Jenkins multiple times. So let's take a look at Travis then. Because, uh, yeah, even if uh, our main target was LibreCore CI in Jenkins, it's also possible to use these images in Travis. Um, and yeah, here's an example of using these images. So basically, it's just uh, pulling the image and then invoking it uh, from your script and all sim simulation flows, all testing flows run inside. So as an EDA uh, um, engineer or as an open source hardware maintainer, you do not need to maintain your own scripts, your own uh, ecosystem just to run, uh, to set up environment and to get it running. We offered it out of the box. Um, another thing which came out of the project was a better few SOC uh, integration uh, because uh, is it uh, visible? I mean the script? Uh, okay, that's good because I don't see it on the screen. Okay, uh, so the idea was uh, to offer a better um, a few SOC experience for uh, LibreCore CI users and uh, Nancy was able to do that. So the idea was to put all common uh, um, functionality to a library and now you can see on the screen that uh, there is few so closure where you just say which image you want to take which uh, library you want to build uh, basically it's few sock model you specify path to that and then uh, you can uh, specify some hooks for example a few target for few sock uh, and additional handlers if you need them so uh, there is an example for shell publishing but you can also publish the record and all the magic uh, happens inside. So when you have such definition for your few SOC based projects, uh, it automatically provisions agents, it uh, uh, sets, up, sets up environment, it uh, runs few SOC uh, synthesis, uh, then uh, simulation if you have uh, any tests, report results, but uh, yeah, this is hidden uh, uh, by the framework. So it's just a generalization, and yeah, if you use few SOC and other components, you can take a look so that uh, you can uh, reuse uh, these combinations. Um, Another example is for Yosis. Uh, who does use Yosis in this room? Okay, uh, does anyone publish uh, synthesis stats? Uh, for example, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing, because Yosis uh, didn't have any standard component for reporting uh, uh, synthesis stats, for example, uh, just resource usage or cell counts. Uh, it was putting it to the log, um, and uh, our interest was uh, to offer a way to just observe uh, these stats for common components. So Nancy created some scripts in order to uh, parse uh, outputs and prepare machine-readable uh, report formats. You can find uh, these scripts in the repositories. And we also put these scripts to uh, LibreCore CI images. So if you use uh, these images in your projects, you can just invoke, um, for example, this pipeline step, but you can also just invoke the script. And we, it will uh, build your some uh, reports. For example, you can get trends. So yeah, these trends are not really informative because there are just two builds and really no difference between them. But you can uh, get more informative trends and also you can uh, extract uh, stats in CSV format. Uh, so we got uh, some improvements for LibreCore CI, uh, but yeah, it's just at the beginning. So we plan to keep working on the project in the next phases. We review options how to proceed. And uh, one of our main priorities would be to focus on uh, uh, developer tools. Uh, one of the things uh, would be to just have LibreCourse developer huddle uh, running. Uh, for a while we had a regular meeting of, for LibreCourse developers. We want to revive that. We also want to have more ID uh, tool images and uh, documentation. So if you have some ideas, if you have some uh, requests, just uh, join our Gitter channel and you can uh, also submit issues. Uh, so yeah, uh, we have maybe 12 e open source EDA tools, but obviously we could have more. And another maybe moonshot goal is to actually update FuSoc to use LibreCore CI Docker images. Because our, uh, the current situation with FuSoc is that it relies on local installation of tools so that you have to prepare your environment for these tools. And it would be interesting if you were able to split uh, phases and use uh, Docker containers for that so that uh, you could easily have multiple tools on your system. You can, could easily parallelize the builds, for example, simulation, testing, just by using this virtualization uh, from FuSoc directly. 
So it would be end goal for me within this project. Um, if you have interest in uh, that, uh, please let me know because yeah, I'm really looking for uh, contributors uh, to work together. Uh, regarding LibreCourse CI infrastructure, we want uh, to return back to SaaS option because yeah, we switched uh, back to developer tools and probably now it's time to think about SaaS again. Uh, thanks uh, to FOSI, we got some budget in order to extend our SaaS instance to uh, go beyond alpha version and uh, maybe it's a good opportunity to do no, uh, it now because now you do not really need to have your own FPGAs. There are FPGAs as a service available in 2019. Uh, there is also uh, things like Kubernetes, etc., which uh, simplify managing uh, ecosystems on a high level, not just a particular Jenkins instance or particular instance for tools, but uh, yeah, just the entire system which could be reusable. And that would be a main focus for LibreCore CI as a service. Okay, if you're interested in any of these parts, if you want to use LibreCourse CI as a developer or if you use, want to use it as a service, we invite you to contribute to the project. Uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, various uh, newbie-friendly issues and just issues to resolve. So please feel free to reach out uh, to us. Everything is located within LibreCourse GitHub organization. And uh, there are also mailing lists, guitar chats, so you can uh, um, uh, connect to us and uh, actually now it's a good opportunity to start contributing because next month they will be Hacktoberfest. So Hacktoberfest is a global online event uh, and yeah, if you're a maintainer of any project I encourage you to at least uh, create some GitHub issues and mark them as Hacktoberfest because actually it pulls in a lot of newcomers uh, to the projects and uh, yeah, many projects could benefit from that. Yeah, if you want to do it in LibreCourse, we already have uh, maybe 20 tickets uh, for that, and obviously we can create more if somebody is interested. Okay, any questions? Thank you. Uh, two questions. One uh, is mm -hmm. Verilator one of the tools that you're uh, that you, you have in here, and two, are you uh, are you the versions of your tools fixed, or are you pulling head of the tools and automatically uh, building that? Okay, uh, so uh, we have uh, models infrastructure. Models infrastructure is basically able to pull uh, recent versions and to version the components by, for example, GitHub tags if they are available. Uh, for our Docker images, uh, right now we have uh, fixed versions and we update uh, these versions. So uh, our images have their own versioning and for each version you can uh, be sure which versions of tools we include. But the idea is to include uh, recent versions because again we want to avoid explosion of configurations. Uh, so yeah, if there is a specific need to have a baseline, for example like Python 2 and Python 3 or something like that, it's one of the questions. But yeah, for minor versions we would just uh, want to have uh, the latest one. Mm -hmm. So we always, um, so originally we planned also to have like releases, like quarterly releases where we just make a hard fix of version mm -hmm. numbers just because otherwise you end up like with explosion of options and variants mm -hmm. and whatever and okay. I think that's something we're looking at. Yeah. So just uh, to elaborate on tools, so this is probably a better example of how uh, to use them because he, here we just pull uh, the latest version of our image. So if we have an incompatible uh, EDE tool change, which is unfortunately an often case uh, for EDE tools, then uh, yeah, this uh, CI flow may break. So we have a follow-up uh, story to uh, pin versions in our CI flows as well. Hi, um, okay. so how many builds are you doing per day and how many projects are you using Mm -hmm. this tooling so far? Okay, so if we talk about SaaS, right now we run uh, around 10 uh, to 12 builds per day. Uh, most of them are just demos. Uh, so yeah, LibreCourse CI is in the beta state. And basically it means that if anybody is interested, you can just try it out uh, for your projects. So we do not have massive uh, GA uh, or whatever for LibreCourse CI. Regarding uh, usages for tools, uh, it really depends because we cannot track that. For example, this example for open risk, it doesn't run on our infrastructure, though it uh, uses bits of LibreCourse CI. I don't have statistics for that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if we talk about massive adoption, it's yet in the future, and that's why we are looking for contributions in order to prepare to that. 
So, um, hello. I'm very glad to see you uh, presenting this again. I remember your presentation from a couple years back, and I'll admit mm -hmm. I'm slowly becoming a believer in CI for perhaps <laughs> all of the wrong reasons. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we, when you think you have something that works and you make a small change to it, and of course it still works. Uh, <laughs> At any rate, I would like to try some of this. Is this the sort of thing I can just try on my computer, downloading enough type stuff and uh, try it? Is there a good place to go for documentation, or should I just start asking questions mm -hmm. on Gitter? Yeah, you can uh, go for documentation. So, for example, LibreCourse CI, Docker Images, uh, all of them have embedded documentation right inside repositories. If some documentation is missing, you just create a GitHub issue and we will try to fix that. Because, yeah, in all open source projects, documentation is something uh, which can be always improved. But, yeah, we have some documentation and for all new features, we include the documentation right away. Thank you very much. Hi, um, you were talking about a um, mm -hmm. standardized format uh, for um, logging what are various parameters uh, of the outcome. Um, do you think we can propose actually some standard way to do that so that we have can have all the open source tools at least output some, at least maybe subset of uh, such a, a um, uh, insight in, in the synthesis output because then we can mm -hmm. compare them easily and, and all. Yeah, so wishful thinking uh, there was standard logging. Unfortunately, there is no standard logging in DA tools. Uh, when it comes uh, even to vendors, uh, you can take Altera, you can take Mentor Graphics, and even within their own tools, they have different uh, logging styles, even within a single product. Uh, so, how it's usually resolved in EDA tools, you create uh, standard parsing rules, put it somewhere. For example, in LibreCourse CI, we have log parser plugin for Jenkins. So, if you use Jenkins, maybe you've tried that, uh, which uses regular expressions and other things to extract the meaningful bits of, from logs. Uh, unifying logs uh, might be a good uh, opportunity for um, big foundations, maybe for FOSI Foundation, maybe for Chips uh, or Alliance or something like that, because it's really a huge effort across multiple vendors. Uh, so it would be nice if it happens, but uh, it's not nearly there, unfortunately. Well, for open source, yeah, please do that. Uh, so, yeah, if you want to improve your CS, your SOC, etc., just do that, it would be nice. Uh, for example, in Java Vault, we have some standard uh, login formats, uh, and yeah, we could do it with, uh, from, for EDE. Uh, but yeah, it would be addressed only a subset of tools. Uh, okay. So, yeah, October 1st, uh, if somebody wants to import a floating, please do so. Uh, it will be much appreciated. <laughs> okay. No, I, I just forgot the question. But I remember. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I've been kind of working in parallel with you because mm -hmm. I've done the same with EHDL, and since there are no upstream images for Yossi, symbiosis, very late or are, mm -hmm. so we've done the, the, the same. And there are two main problems I found. The first one is that at first I tend to put as much tools as possible in the same image, yeah. not going larger than a gigabyte. And I found that people wouldn't really like it because mm -hmm. each person would want to change one bit of, of it. So in the end I found that it's easier to just provide an image for each tool as long as you don't have very hard dependencies. Like, yeah. for example, Yossi is a symbiosis, so yeah. you really need those together. But, for example, Coco TV or other yeah. tools can be separated. So, there's just some, some discussion. Right. It would be great to have a separate tool for, a separate image for a separate tool. And this is what we encourage uh, to do. Uh, the problem with that is that if you use uh, build tools, for example, just make file of use sock or whatever, then there is an expectation that these tools run on a single machine. And you have to provide all tools required for particular execution uh, within the same environment. So that's why I was talking about having a few SOC supporting uh, containers inside. Because, for example, it would uh, address this case for few SOC which is really an issue for LibreCourse CI right now. 
Um, and uh, yeah, alternative which was created by Stefan, basically for the same purpose is to just uh, pull tools from external location. So yeah, if you have a good network connection within your data center, it could be also an option. And but that comes to the second point. Mm -hmm. I've been following your work for the last four years with more or less activity, but I find it really exciting and mm -hmm. I think that it was really breakthrough when you proposed it five years ago because there was mm -hmm. nothing like that for hardware. We knew that it's from software world, but there was mm -hmm. nothing for hardware. But four years later, I feel that some parts of this large infrastructure have already been implemented by other people. And mm -hmm. when I go to your site, I find it difficult to really find the special <laughs> things you did, like this few shock integration or connecting with remote FPGAs, Th mm -hmm. those bits that you have, those tools that you have implemented for this, mm -hmm. which are not really available nowhere else. And mm -hmm. I don't know, it's not a crisis thing, I'm just asking you to state clearly what you are good at, okay. instead of trying to provide a large system that competes with many other well, services. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, to answer this question, firstly, it's one of the reasons why we switched to developer tools first just to address cases which are not addressed by existing solutions. And yeah, regarding documentation, uh, yeah, we need to work on that. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah, I will promise you, next year we come back and we have 25 tools and a lot of documentation. Okay. Almost I, uh, my entire October 1st goes to LibreCourse this year. <laughs> so I have a lot of free time now, so <laughs> hopefully, finally, I will get to this mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. Okay. Sorry? Yeah, <laughs> I have a very long to-do list. <laughs> yeah. So all open source projects depend on contributions. Yeah, LibreCourse uh, has several contributors, so there is continuous evolution for LibreCourse web, and uh, FOSI sponsors uh, uh, some contract activities there for LibreCourse CI. Yeah, basically having more contributors would not hurt for sure. Yeah, so if you want mm -hmm. to contribute and funding is a problem, the Foundation is always happy to fund people to do open source stuff, right? Mm -hmm. We have funds. <laughs> Not much, but... Uh, I have a short question. What kind of Docker are you using engine? Uh, is this the community edition or just a standard one? Uh, so, inside uh, LibreCourse CI, currently we use uh, standard Docker, uh, community edition. The plan is to switch to a standard uh, Kubernetes engine uh, within uh, Amazon Cloud, so, um, uh, just because we get uh, better uh, cost uh, efficiency there when we uh, split uh, when we uh, scale the load. Uh, but yeah, uh, right now it's Docker C for prototypes. So whatever I was presenting, you can just install Docker or Docker for Mac or Docker for Windows on your machine. And after applying some magic, uh, all the uh, demos we have will ro run on your local machine without SaaS. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay. Then let's thank the speaker again. Okay. Thank you.